Emma Coronel Aispuro is a beauty queen turned Instagram style icon. She's also, as it happens, the wife of El Chapo, one of the world's most cold-blooded criminals to ever grace this earth. Let's take a look at the strange and surreal story of Emma Coronel Aispuro, El Chapo's loving and devoted wife. How did Emma meet El Chapo? Born in 1989, Emma grew up in the drug trade. Her father, Inez Coronel Barreras, was a member of the Sinaloa cartel, the very cartel El Chapo was leader of. Funnily enough, 1989 is also the year that El Chapo rose through the ranks as leader of this cartel. Emma's uncle, Ignacio Coronel Villarreal, was also a cartel member and was considered one of Mexico's most dangerous men. Although she grew up in rural Mexico, Emma was born in Santa Clara, California. Because of this, she holds dual citizenships in both the US and Mexico. She was recognized for her beauty at an early age. She won the Coffee and Guava Queen beauty pageant. This event would change her life forever, as it was here that she met her future husband, El Chapo. At the time, El Chapo was 46 years old and a well-known drug dealer in the area. You'd wonder whether it was love at first sight or the sight of the other gunmen in the building that made her give in to his charms. This is the never-ending mystery behind Emma. Does she live a life of love or a life of fear or even a combination of the two? She married him a year later on her 18th birthday in July 2007. Despite being one of Mexico's most notorious criminals, Emma claims that she had no idea what he did for a living. At that time, he was not only a drug dealer, he was on the run and had escaped prison in 2001. The wedding was apparently attended by members of the Mexican army, politicians, and even the governor of Sinaloa. She was not El Chapo's first wife. She was possibly the second, third, maybe even fourth. One book entitled Emma and the Other Narco Woman reveals that he married Alejandrina Salazar, a social worker, in 1977. It is alleged that they never divorced, which would mean Emma was never legally El Chapo's wife. In response to these allegations, Emma said that she and El Chapo were married under the law of the divine. As the spouse of one of the wealthiest people in the world, she never needed to provide for herself. It is known, however, that she had career ambitions in the media as she studied journalism in Culiacan. She is quite good with the press, and this may be the reason why. A turbulent marriage. Four years later, in 2011, the couple had two twin girls. Despite living in Mexico, Emma was brought to California to give birth to these two girls and make them US citizens. The father's name was suspiciously left off the birth certificate and might have something to do with there being a $5 million bounty for his capture by the US government. El Chapo is believed to have 15 other children from the other marriages, as well as countless affairs. In 2014, when these girls were just three years old, their father was arrested, but for El Chapo, getting sent to prison wasn't a huge deal. This was the second time he was arrested. Having escaped prison in 2001 by hiding in a laundry cart and bribing almost all of the prison guards and staff, if you're El Chapo and put in a Mexican prison, it's just a matter of time before you could escape again. Not a lot is known about Emma's involvement in the drug cartel, but she did assist the cartel when they tried to break El Chapo out of prison again. He was now in a maximum security prison, so breaking out was a bit more difficult. But the CCTV had a blind spot. Each cell had a shower, and the cameras never filmed them in the shower, so a tunnel system was dug beneath the showers. A tunnel system spanning over a mile long, leading to a property owned by Emma. Emma had, coincidentally, bought a property in the exact location that El Chapo escaped prison from. By now, she was clearly embedded within the cartel. Her husband's second time on the run was not as lengthy this time around. In 2016, El Chapo was captured again in a bloody raid by Mexican officials. His escape had humiliated the Mexican authorities, so they were a lot more ruthless in capturing him this time. To make matters worse, he was extradited to the US because of how wide widespread his drug reach was in the United States. At one stage, 80% of the drug trade in Chicago was controlled by El Chapo. He was extradited to the United States on January 19th, 2017. El Chapo's trial. It wasn't until 2018 that his trial in the US began. It was during this trial that Emma was really brought into the spotlight. Her beauty caught the attention of the paparazzi, and she was known for her stylish trips in and out of the courts. She would even blow kisses to her husband from across the courtroom. This bit of theater created a lot of media attention, and Emma's loyalty towards her husband had astonished news outlets everywhere. During the trial, she heard about her husband's torturing and killing of other people. She even heard about his multiple mistresses, but remained loyal to her man. She told the court that she knew nothing about the Sinaloa cartel and that her husband was the owner of an irrigation company. Everything that was discussed in the trial about Joaquin, good and bad, does not change in any way the way I think about him. He was sentenced to 30 years, so at 63 is unlikely to be a free man ever again. But despite Emma's repeated declarations of innocence, the trial revealed that she was not completely oblivious to El Chapo's bloody empire, nor did she turn a blind eye to it. In fact, when they discussed his business, it looked like just another married couple discussing 
balancing their work lives. According to Rolling Stone magazine, text messages between El Chapo and Coronel that were read during the trial painted a portrait of a husband and wife chatting about felonies with the same breezy familiarity as a woman reminding her husband to pick up toilet paper. More disturbingly, they jokingly talked about how their kids would soon grow up to be like their daddy. In one text, El Chapo texted, Our Kiki is fearless. I'm going to give her an AK-47 so she can hang with me. If you're wondering how their kids turned out, I already did a video on that, so check it out life without El Chapo. But with her husband locked up, it was difficult to know what Emma would do next. As they say, any publicity is good publicity. And Emma had now become a bit of a celebrity. She amassed 600,000 followers on Instagram, despite rarely posting anything. She seemed to enjoy the extra attention and decided to even cash in on her newfound fame. She had plans to start her own El Chapo fashion line, and she even registered it as a trademark. She was now living a life of glitz and glamour in New York. Again, the question of whether Emma's lived a life of love or fear comes up again. Was she devastated to no longer live with her husband? Or maybe she was finally free. She had been living amongst one of the world's most dangerous criminals since she was a teenager. And now she could finally be truly independent. We don't get a full answer to this question because in 2021, Emma was then arrested in Dulles International Airport in Virginia. In November 2021, she was sentenced to three years in prison for her involvement with the Sinaloa cartel. She pleaded guilty to a range of charges, including conspiracy and illegal drug distribution distribution. This included the trafficking of cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, and marijuana across the border in the US. As well as the laundering of the proceeds, the court also ordered that she forfeits nearly $1.5 million and face four years of supervised release when she leaves prison. This time around, she wasn't the cool and confident woman we saw before in the courts. In fact, she cracked. She admitted everything. She even showed remorse for her actions. In terms of her involvement, the court deemed that she knew about everything, but wasn't very involved. Federal prosecutor Anthony Nardozzi explained that although her involvement was significant, her role was minimal, and she quickly accepted responsibility for her criminal conduct. Speaking through a Spanish interpreter, she said that she expressed true regret for any and all harm that I may have done. This strange U-turn in her behavior is incredibly interesting. With El Chapo now serving a life sentence, was she no longer afraid? Could she finally speak her mind? Or was she so desperate to not be separated from her kids that she did whatever it took to reduce her sentence? It's important not to underestimate how dangerous it was for her to plead guilty in this case. It's been reported in the media that she cooperated with the US authorities, and the cartel will not not like that one bit. This woman has endless information about their criminal activities. Information from her alone could nearly bring down the cartel itself. With this in mind, it's unlikely that she'll ever return to Mexico. But now, she won't be living the life of luxury she's been used to ever since she met the love of her life when she was 17. Instead, she's now alone and behind bars. She's now living with the consequences of her actions, and this might be a bitter pill to swallow. Robert Almonte, a security consultant based in Texas, told the New York Post, there's no such thing as early release from federal prison. She's not going to be used to doing federal time in the US. It won't be like in Mexico, where prisoners can pay for luxurious cells and takeout food. She is going to get a reality check. What life will be back once she is released, time will only tell. What does El Chapo think about her giving in to the US authorities? He might forgive her, but will the cartel? She might not enjoy being in prison right now, but at least it's keeping her safe for now. If you enjoyed this video, click a video on the screen and join us on another fascinating journey into the murky world of crime. See you there.